We are trying to dry out the floor from my second baler that we got in the shop here. It snowed like a son of a bitch, so we're in the middle of melting the baler off. But pulled the strippers off this. We're going to pull all the twine out of the header and, and replace all the tines that maybe broke or missing or feel like they are worn out. There are not very many on this one. Um, we're going to go through, check all the chains on it, make sure there's nothing that looks out of whack. These chains are in pretty damn good condition. Check both sides. Uh, we're going to check these. These bushings are nice and tight, but we're going to, I'm going to pop them off and check them anyways. And I may just put them back on. I replaced them last year and they didn't need replaced. They had 15, I think this baler had like 15 or 16. This one had 16,500 bales on it last year on these bushings and they look brand new. We're probably not going to have to replace those this year, which that's kind of nice, but we're probably going to replace these rollers. Check these rollers, make sure they're in good shape. Check my, my brake. That's another thing. I I may or may not replace the stuffer brake on this one. It was fine on that one. So I may or may not replace it. I'm going to pull it off, check it out, just to see if, if I need to replace it or not. But that may or may not. I may put a disc in it, but I'd normally replace those plates. But sometimes they're really worn. You can tell when they're wore out really bad. And if they got any kind of a slope to them at all, you got to replace the plates. So we're going to dig in there, see what it looks like. I may end up just putting new plates and, and whatnot on there. Like I normally do that every year. Um, so anyways, we're going to go through this baler, check all this out. We're going to put check the connecting rods on the packers, probably replace the packer bearings on this one because I'd normally do that once they start approaching 40,000 bales. Um, so we're going to do that. That one there got it last year. This one's going to get it this year. Um, go through and I'm going to update my springs to the bigger crop holding springs. We're going to check out the crop holding fingers, make sure everything looks correct there. Replace the plunger bearings and rollers. Um, change the plunger knives and the stationary knives. Check all the, the hay dog springs. Change the needle rollers, the tucker arm rollers, slacker arm rollers and change the gearbox oils and whatnot. Change the, check the wheel bearings, make sure everything's good on the wheel bearings, repack them. And there's probably some other stuff I'm forgetting too, but uh, the rollers for the cams up there on the, on the twine fingers and tucker arm cam rollers, we're gonna check, replace those. Not check them, we're gonna replace those. And then I'm also gonna check all the twine finger bearings. We pull those off and make sure that they spin and don't have any grab in them at all if they do you replace them because if if you get up there and you just wiggle it back and forth they're a quarter turn and it don't you don't hang up that doesn't mean it's not going to screw up and if one of those hangs up you miss all all six strings which i haven't had that happen in i don't know how many years because we check those all the time so we're going to check that and that will probably basically complete this bit so let's go over this one we basically got this one done we're doing the I gotta put new bolts in the in the load cells here on both sides that hold this on. Those top broke the tops off, but they thread up through the bottom and go in there. So we're gonna put new bolts in there. New Holland has the most accurate scale on the market, bar none. We put this up against our certified scales, and it's I mean they're within five pounds. So I don't know any scale on the market that that's that's that close. New Holland's the only one I believe on the market that has the inclinometers and declinometers. So if you're on a hill coming up a hill or down a hill. It'll, it'll adjust for the weight on the slope that you're at. And I don't believe, I know Massey don't have that and I don't believe Crone has that either. So New Holland has the most accurate scales on the market for sure. Um, let's see here. This one we basically are done with other than I'm still missing the two side rollers on the plunger um, for centering the plunger. And I haven't got any of my needle rollers and slacker arm rollers and whatnot. But, this baler is basically done. We went in here and, and we deleted the snap ring that was on here. And so we, we got it basically perfect. So still got a little bit of play in there to where this isn't going to bind up, but we have no end to end play where the snap ring, it's hard to make that up. So it's, as you can see over time, it's, it's rubbed and it's rubbed on the inside. So that keeps that centered up and it keeps it from coming out. I've had these, I had one come out, I had it lose the snap ring and it came out right to about here and this crank arm hit it and bent the shit out of this, this arm in here. And what scared me, and the reason that I wanted to do this, is what scared me is I thought this arm, that, this little shaft that goes in here goes into this gearbox. And I thought if that hit that hard enough to where it broke that 
cast iron hole that goes into this gearbox. A gearbox is like 7,500 bucks. I don't ever want to have to replace that. So we went ahead and shit canned the snap ring, drilled this out, threaded it, and, and put that in. We've already tested around this baler and it works awesome. So that's going to be really nice. We rock tighted this in where that won't back out. And that's going to make a big difference on things here. Um, we've replaced these rollers on these pivot arms, uh, replaced the rollers in, in these cam slots. These bearings were good. Uh, so we didn't, didn't have to mess with those, but I mean, we have no, no play here. Uh, replaced the, there was a couple bearings on the connecting rods, but not the, not the Packer bearings were all good on this one. Cause these ones got, got replaced last year, but there was a couple connecting rod bearings in there that were bad. So we replaced those, uh, checked all the chains, all the chains were good. Replaced a shitload of tines on this. Um, changed all of them. I say change gearbox a little, we've done that. Uh, so yeah, this baler's in, in really good shape. So if you want to know what 44,000 bales looks like on a new Holland baler when it's, when it's serviced correctly and ran correctly and not just completely destroyed, uh, this is, this is what they look like. And I mean, it looks like a brand new fucking baler. So it's, we have no issues with our balers. We, we do extensive winter maintenance and the winter maintenance from everyone I've talked to, the winter maintenance is not even close to being what a Chrome baler is. I'm not sure on a Massey. I don't think the Masseys cost a whole, whole lot. And I know the Masseys are a pretty good baler. Um, but definitely the New Holland and the Masseys are the cheapest to operate. And I'm a farmer. This is my livelihood. So I love return on income and return on investments. So I'm going to go buy $150,000 New Holland Baylor. It's going to get me a long ways down the road and I don't have to put a whole lot of money into it. And I don't have to be out there with a service truck 24 seven, keeping it running. And that's all money in my pocket. I enjoy that. So we're basically done with this baler. I just got to put the needle rollers and whatnot on it once they show up. But this baler turned out fantastic as usual. This is our oldest baler. Everything's all all uh, put together and rocking and rolling, ready to ready to start the 2021 hay season. So this is this is pretty nice. But anyways, these here, the guys got to keep these shimmed to where they've got a speck in the book underneath this roller, and you got you need to be able to slide. I don't know what the what the speck is, but it's not much. The gap in between this roller and this crank here, and you do that, you adjust that by adding your subtracting shims here and that keeps that stuffer from slamming because when it comes around it once it goes past once it goes past this spot here it'll like try to catch air if there's not enough shims in here and it'll start slamming and wearing these these cranks out so always keep those shimmed i always check that adjustment all summer long so that's that's one thing that's nice we've already updated this to the big springs for the crop holding fingers so those are those are a lot better spring than the old ones. And I think that's that's about it on this baler. This has been a really good baler. I did have a question. I've got this panel open here. I did have a question on if I've ever tore the splines out of the slip clutch on these. And yes, I have on a not on a not on a plus baler. This has kind of been updated. I'm not sure about this actual hub in this clutch has been updated, but I know a lot of this is a lot different than what is on a standard baler. And the one that I had the issue with was on a on a standard is like, a, I think it was a 2013 model standard, 340. And yes, I have torn these out. It didn't hurt the Packer splines. It just tore the splines out of this, this clutch here. So I just kept one on hand all the time. I have yet to have that issue. And I put way more bales on these plus balers than I had on standard balers. So I have yet to have that issue with these. And so I, I think that's been taken care of. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but this isn't, this is one of the easiest fixes. If that does happen and you're worried about it, keep one on the shelf and it's like 20 minutes. You got this pulled apart and put this clutch in and, and you're back to running. So that's, that's not a big concern to me at all. Um, they tighten these up from the 9080s and to where it won't slip as much. And I think they may have, gone a little too far to where it was once it would catch a slug or something it would just torque down and wouldn't wouldn't slip as easy as maybe it should have and maybe that's the issue that they were having but i mean we never plugged these balers up at all so um yeah the plus balers have been a huge huge uh improvement over the standard 340 balers i know there was there's some people i have an issue. I've, 
I had an issue with my first 340 standard baler. It would bail flawlessly, like 5,000 bales, and it would shear the bolt for the, for the needles on the drive line over there, and it would, it would eat the needles about every 5,000 bales. I would never get off the baler. Every 5,000 bales would do that. I thought, man, that's kind of weird. You know, no one could ever figure it out. So I ended up shit canning it for this baler here, actually. Um, and this was the first, this was the first plus baler sold in the state of Nevada. So this, this has been a fantastic baler. Um, but even at that, put six needles in it and that's not the most expensive thing in the world. So I, I wasn't really overly concerned about that, but it was enough to where, I mean, the baler, like I said, bailed flawlessly up until for whatever reason it would shear that bolt and we, we tried replacing the bolt every thousand bales 500 bales 300 bales just to make sure that there wasn't some slop or replace the hub on on that because i'd heard that there was some issues where the hole for the bolt wasn't machined quite correctly to where it would like wear that bolt out prematurely so we replaced that to no avail it was weird um which i don't know I, I ran two other standard balers and never had any issues with them. It was just that one. So, I mean, occasionally I guess a guy gets a lemon, but, uh, and that's in any, any manufacturer. I don't care what, what the manufacturer is. They all have, you can, you can get a bad one every now and then, but, um, uh, as far as the plus balers, I think they're a phenomenal baler. So, and they changed a lot of that. We'll go back around there. They changed a lot of that on that gearbox for, for supper gearbox that runs your Nauter drive gearbox. They changed the pitch on all this because it used to be way steeper. This would be like that and to where it was quite the pitch on this. So they changed that pitch. So I know that they were thinking that something was causing an issue on that older baler for them to completely redesign this. And so that's a way straighter pitch because it would go, it don't matter without it, without a constant velocity joint on just a normal U-joint when they're at a bit, the bigger the pitch, it changes speed, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, when, you, when you're making that turn. So they tried to straighten this out as much as they could. And, I mean, we've, we've yet to have any issues with this. So um, I think that's all been taken care of. That's all been ratified, you know, ratif well, what the hell's that word? <laughs> Radicated. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I've, we've yet to have any issues with, with this Nauter drive system on this, on these plus balers. They've been fantastic balers and we put a lot of bales on. So yeah, we're, we're, we're kicking ass with these plus balers, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at with these. We're going to get that one dried out and start working on it and get my, my newest one in here and get it done once we're done with that. But I just want to show you guys kind of where we're at and answer, answer that question. So...